Hey there folks, it's Richard of DoomedMovieThon.com, back with another episode of My Horror Shelfie. My Horror Shelfie is a series where I talk about every single horror movie on my horror movie shelves from A to Z. And if it's your first time here, I hope you're prepared for this format. And by format, I mean this face, because this is the face through the whole video. We are continuing with the letter H. I dare say we're going to finish the letter H today. But let's go pick some movies from the Shelvies. My Horror Shelvy. First things first is a first movie. It's called House of Dark Shadows. This is a film that kind of does a short version of the TV show. And I really, really enjoy this. This is an excellent October movie. Uh, when you want to feel some spooky vibes, it's really solid. I've seen clips of the original show. I have never delved into the giant box set with all the uh, hundreds and hundreds of episodes. Soap operas, man, they got some episodes, but I recommend the film. Very recently, good old Mondo Macabro put out House of Terrors, a gothic Japanese horror film that is really, really good. Uh, it's black and white, and the cinematography is incredible. The mood is crazy characters are weird, and I really enjoy it. Um, it got labeled as a, a Japanese giallo, which sort of? It's got a mystery. Who knows what criteria people have for giallo? Who knows? <laughs> Many years ago, um, I reviewed on this channel House of the Dead, and I hated it, and I decided to get rid of the DVD, and then I never did because I actually really love this movie. I know Guilty Pleasure, again, I mention this like every episode, people don't like the phrase guilty pleasures, but you know, I feel like um, I know it's bad, and uh, so it's okay. It's okay to use that phrase. I don't actually like feel guilty. No one will prosecute me. My favorite thing about House of the Dead is it should have been called Let's Run Through a Yard, because uh, it just tries to recreate the video game experience by having people go from the street through the yard up to the house of the dead and it's the biggest longest sequence of the movie and it's completely insane dollar bin go for it <laughs> okay i have no idea why for some reason sleepwalkers is in here the weird uh cat movie got a receipt from sound exchange our local movie company here i bought blood rain blood rain 2 and house of the dead and just to make sure um, i got to keep my street cred I bought a Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter, so that's fun. Next up, shout out to my pal Brad. Um, I've got House of the Devil here. House of the Devil is from Ty West, and I think this and The Innkeepers um, are his most rewatchable movies for me. This is great stuff, and I just adore this movie. Uh, Brad, my buddy on the podcast, Hello, This is the Doomed Show, is a huge fan of this film. He's a mega fan of this film, so absolutely, absolutely love it. Hidden Inside uh, is The Roost, also from uh, Ty West. Wow. House of Long Shadows. Um, I have never seen this one. I picked it up. Good old Vinny P., Christopher Lee, and Peter Cushing, and John Carradine, and, you know, Desi Arnaz Jr., the real star of the movie. I don't know if I've heard a lot of good things about this one, but I'm excited to eventually get around to it. Here's a weird one. This is a House of Voices. Uh, this is a French, I believe, horror film. Might be a European co-production. I remember it gave me some old-school Euro horror vibes. Uh, there's definitely a lot of cool imagery in this, and I believe uh, good old uh, Catriona McCall happens to make a little cameo in this, or she's a major part, I can't remember. Catriona McCall, of course, from Lucio Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy. But if you see a copy of good old uh, House of Voices, give it a watch. Again, Hidden Inside, another film. Um, it's The Broken, which is one of those eight films to die for. You know, another European movie that is strange. House on Haunted Hill. Now, this is a good one. This, of course, is a remake of the classic Vincent Price movie. And it's a solid, solid horror movie. I uh, highly recommend this if you haven't gotten around to it yet. Still have the old Warner Brothers cardboard case. Because sometimes you do not need to upgrade these things. 
Oh, man, speaking of being stubborn about upgrading, House on Sorority Row. Excellent slasher. Classy, dare I say it, slasher. Feels like a big studio production, and it's got one of the best frickin' lines of dialogue ever delivered. I'll see if I can drop a clip in here for you, but man. How do we know she is alive? What are you <sighs> Great slasher stuff right here. Perfect. If you want to pair this with um, Happy Birthday to Me, I think those two films complement each other quite a bit. The theme of this episode is movies hidden inside of other movies. And here is good old uh, Sorority Row, the remake of House on Sorority Row, which uh, I like that remake. It's pretty fun. It has one of my favorite what moments in it. My biggest criticism about the remake is that the characters aren't very interesting, but, you know, slasher movies... Apparently they're not supposed to be interesting, but I find characters in slasher movies fascinating for some reason. I don't know. Speaking of Mondo Macabro, uh, here's Lucio Fulci. No, <laughs> it's Paul Nashi. He's a, he's a different guy. I really enjoy good old uh, Paul Nashi, and Howl of the Devil was really hard to find for a while. Finally, Mondo Macabro hooked us up, and by us I mean Paul Nashi fans, with Howl of the Devil. It is not a favorite by any means, but it is really cool. He does all kinds of characters in this. He puts on, like, all the different makeups for all the different characters. You know, like, Jekyll and Hyde, maybe? Frankenstein, definitely. Dracula, probably. <laughs> I think he plays the devil here as well. I don't know, you gotta see this. Um, it's really solid. Okay, Howling 2. Uh, your sister's a werewolf. I do have Howling here, but it's stashed in with the fog. Because the fog and the howling are a double feature together. Thank you, Scream Factory? Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf, is great. It is a movie where it goes completely off the rails from what the first movie was doing, and I accept it wholly. Uh, this is nuts. This is truly one of the most baffling movies I've ever seen. Highly recommend it if you haven't gotten to it yet. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge you in, in a bad way, but you will be entertained. Speaking of entertaining, Howling 3, fantastic. Three times the Howling. Um, this is wild. So the director of Howling 2, even though it was bad, I think was a success. And they said, hey man, you want to make Howling 3? And the director said, yeah, but we're going to Australia because he's from Australia. So he made this movie where the werewolves are marsupials, so they got pouches where their babies, like, crawl into their pouches. Yep. But that's just a small taste of the craziness. This is really, truly strange cinema. It's a journey movie where the characters, like, go on walkabout. You... Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Last movies of this pile of H. This is the last of the H's. Um, this is Howling 5 and 6. Um, Howling 4 is somewhere... Okay, here we go. <laughs> here is Howling 4, uh, paired up with uh, Ghoulies 4. I've never seen either of these, but they look ridiculous, so I had to have them. And then I've got Howling 5 and 6 I've also not seen, so... You know, for years I only watched the first Howling. For many years, because I heard all the sequels were so bad. And then when I finally watched Howling 2, I was like, whoa, this is great. That opened up the gates for Howling 3, which was even better, I think. So, the journey continues. Uh, Howling 4 is supposedly closer to the book, which Gary Brandner, who wrote the original book, was very pissed off by Howling 2 because they threw away his entire script. And then it just devolves. I think there's a Howling 7 that people are not a fan of, and maybe more. I think that's it, after 7. So... We finished a letter, which on this show, you know, it means it's time for a box, box set, set special. special. Peace. Peace, Peace out, out to your to grandma. grandma. And speaking of grandmas, um, Camille Keaton. I don't know if she is a grandma, but, you know, it's possible. 
I love Camille Keaton. Uh, she's great. She's done some landmark films. She's done some infamous films in her career. But she went to Italy and made some stuff. And we've got a trilogy here. Uh, my favorite, of course, being Tragic Ceremony. I love Tragic Ceremony. Ricardo Freda. It's sort of, kind of, not really a giallo. Um, the Italian title, which I'll put on the screen here, and the translation of the Italian title, which I'll put on the screen here, is very giallo-like, I think, because it was released in 72 or 71. They wanted to try to trick people into thinking that it was a giallo when it's really not, but some mysterious stuff happens. It's gothic, it's gory, it's strange, and it's kind of stupid. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend that one. Sex of the Witch is also on here. That's a giallo. Um, I've ranked that as one of the worst giallo I've ever seen. But that was bad bag. That was back on a bad bootleg. <laughs> and so I'm looking forward to reevaluating that. Will it still be bad? I don't know. My tastes have changed. I mean, look how much I had to say about Howling 3. Madeline Anatomy of a Nightmare. All I know about that one is that it is a trippy movie that might be horror, might just have some weird imagery to it. I'm not 100% sure, but one day I'll watch it and I'll make a follow-up video. I'll do a live reaction. It will be an hour and a half of me going, hmm, folks, that is the whole episode. Whew, I can't believe we finished a letter. Um, next up, of course, after H, comes the letter L. If you enjoy the music for this channel, I make it all myself. Go to doomedmoviethon.bandcamp.com if you want to check out some of the strange music I've made for this channel over the years. Um, I also have a YouTube channel called The Slow Wizard. Uh, the Slow Wizard is where I take all my little machines and devices that make music and then I make crappy sounds with them and everyone applauds. Except the applauds are just middle fingers waving really hard in the air at me. Hope you guys are doing good, and I'll see you in the next episode of this show. This one.